Sibyl, please turn on your video so I can see you. Sapawato or Ato, Sama Sabutasa, Namota Sapawato or Ato, Sama Sabutasa, Namota Sapawato, Arato, Sama Sabutasa. So, what we're going to do for this morning is um, call walking meditation. I mentioned yesterday it's um, it's not you don't have a thing of walking meditation is something special okay that is a special way of walking there's no special way of walking think there's some kind of special way of walking then please right now throw that idea away there's no special way of walking what we want is to meditate while walking. Meditation while walking is simply to be aware while you walk. And you can be aware of the walking itself. You can also be aware of how you feel as you're walking. You can also be aware of um, what the mind's doing. See, having thoughts. You could even be aware of hearing, you could be aware of seeing. You can be aware of anything that is obvious to you as you're walking. So, um, so remember is meditating while walking. It's not some special kind of walking that you do. But if you don't know what to be aware of, yeah, especially if you're new, if you don't know what to be aware of, then very easy, just be, be aware of the, your, how the body feels physically as you walk. Be conscious of how you're, that you're making a right step, you're making a left step, you're standing, you're turning your body, simple. Okay? All right, let's, uh, everybody get up. Get up and you find a space, a place where you can walk up and down. Anywhere comfortable and reasonably, what do you call it, spacious enough, if possible if you can find such a place. So as you are at one end of your walking path and up and down, you can start, you don't do walk immediately. You can start as you're standing, you can already start being aware. In fact, you have try to be aware whatever you're doing. So as you're standing, simple, there's no there standing. And when you walk, you know you're walking. So I, I like to start this way. I like everybody to start this way. Don't try to meditate again. Don't try to meditate. Just, just walk. Just walk. Just walk. Don't try to meditate. Just walk. Don't try to walk in any special way. Just walk the way you normally, or how should I say, just walk naturally. Relax way, taking a stroll in the park. So as you walk, know that you're walking. Just know that you're walking. Know that you are make, moving forward.
you are turning, know that you're turning. Or if you're like standing for a while, then you stand for a while. Know that. Remember to be aware you're meditating. If you're lost in thoughts, you don't know what you're doing anymore, then you're not meditating. Simple as that. They're walking and you are aware that you are walking. It's not the walking that's important. It's being aware that's important. Just need to remember to be aware. So try for a while on your own. Again, uh, just to remind you, you don't have to be aware of the walking itself only. You can be aware of other things that is within the space of the body and mind, so long as uh, it's obvious enough for you. Be aware of whatever is obvious. Don't try to do walking meditation. In the most comfortable way for you. If you try to walk slow, very slowly, it's not comfortable. It becomes difficult. Okay, you can sit down now. So you can see that now uh, you are walking and looks natural to me, then that's good. When we are walking and meditating, we don't have to look like we are meditating. Yeah. To look like you doing this thing called meditation. Just now I saw somebody, what, they, uh, they see, oh, she looks like somebody, is, she has a cameraman. <laughs> somebody was following her walking and she looked quite natural. Uh, uh, it's good. Um, so you, you, when we when we are when we can be walking naturally, we we don't feel stressed up. Yeah, we, you're trying to walk in a special way, then you're increasing stress for yourself. That's that's unnecessary. 
use of energy. I used to walk uh, in my old practice long ago, try to walk very, very slowly. And as if like we, the slower we walk, the better. That's somehow that's this concept. And, and we were racing. We we're competing and see who can walk slower. <laughs> it's just crazy practice. <laughs> see, so we are on this end already. Okay. If you reach the other end sooner, it means you lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a silent. We, we didn't we didn't say anything. It's a silent kind of competition. <laughs> oh, I don't know whether they're competing with me. I was competing with them. <laughs> That's what I know. So it's 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 a silly thing. You're not meditating anymore. Uh, you're just trying to walk slowly. And when I did that, because there was this one hour walking, one hour sitting thing. Or oh, half an hour, half an hour. So by the end of the day, uh, you're so, so tired. <laughs> Your legs are so, so uh, sore. Yeah. <laughs> unnecessary. Yeah. Unnecessary to do that. It's just unnecessary uh, loss of energy. You know, at that time, I was young. And still, it was so sore. <laughs> I was thinking, well, when I grow old, like, how to practice? <laughs> <laughs> so difficult. Yeah. So no need to do that. Uh, walk normally. If you have to be walking slowly, very, very slowly all the time, how to survive? And you're supposed to practice all the time. So for monks, if we want to go for arms, we walk at that pace. Hi, yeah. <laughs> You'll never reach the place. You never get to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow we come back. <laughs> so, just walk naturally, yeah? No need to walk in any particular form. It's your normal way of walking is good enough. Okay, what normal is could be a problem. Once I say just walk normally and I saw this guy going doom, 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 up and down very fast. And later, I'll, I'll say, why walk so fast? Uh, this is my normal way of walking. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, he lives in Singapore. <laughs> Singapore people walk very far. So that's normal for him. So I, I remember to change. Don't say normal. Say uh, walk naturally. Yeah, walk in a natural, comfortable pace for you. That's the most energy-saving way of walking. So then with an, with an energy-saving way of walking, then you can put more of your attention to your mind. Your mind can do the work of paying attention. If you spend so much energy in the body, then there's not much left for the mind. You lose energy and eventually you can't meditate properly because your mind, your whole system is tied. As you meditate, you should become not more tired. You should become more energetic. Is energetic, the body is energetic. You use very little energy, and you conserve energy very, very well because you're paying attention, you know how to do it well. Just like a person, when a person is uh, not knowing how to ride a bicycle yet, they use a lot of energy, they grip on the handle very tightly, you know, the whole body tenses up, they cannot last. But when you know how to ride a bicycle, you know how to save energy. You can ride comfortably. You don't feel like you need to use a lot of energy. Then you can last. Same thing. So any question on the walking just now as you're walking up and down? Or do you have any particular question about this uh, walking, so-called walking meditation? To ask, right? And that when we walk, we when we walk, we still have a lot of thoughts arising. Should we stop walking? We notice that the thought just oh, no need, no need, no need. You don't have to stop walking because you have thoughts. You can, um, for you, I would suggest never mind about the thinking. 
your mind about thoughts. Just be aware of your walking. The thinking is happening. You know that's happening enough. Don't pay special attention to it. But when after walking, when your practice is very good, when your practice again、uh, momentum, you find that、uh, your awareness is very steady, and then you also find at time that the thinking becomes not so much, and you can be very very clear of the thinking. Only then you watch thinking. Because your 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 the strength of the awareness is enough to watch thinking, in the right way. In the right way means to say you see thinking as thinking. You're not getting lost in the thoughts.、Um, so if you are not ready for it, you watch the thinking. You just get dragged along. Yeah. So whatever that doesn't work for you, don't do it.、Um, so long, if you're not sure, you can try an experiment. See whether it works or not. If it doesn't work, then throw away. Get to something、uh, gross like the body, and you know, you know, or whatever. At that time, you although you know a lot, you have a lot of thinking. It's not so clear to you, right? The body is still clearer. So go by what is obvious to you. Easiest way to meditate just just、uh, use whatever that's most obvious to you. Because that is the object that the mind is most able to follow, and that's the best thing for you at that time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't allow you re- really grow in awareness. It's something like you. So riding a bicycle with the training wheels on, you know, you have these wheels at the back.、Uh, so you can ride the bicycle, but then you don't really become skilled in it because you depend on that. So, the practice you can start with that, but eventually you have to get rid of those things. You have to be willing to let go of the、um, some kind of secure way of practice. So, try and see if you can、um, not use the buddha buddha.、Um, try and see, yeah. If your awareness is good,、uh, naturally, when you walk, you will be aware of a lot of things. Which, in your case, you say you know the breathing. Yeah, you can be aware of the walking and the breathing at the same time because your awareness has become very、uh, strong. So that is fine, no problem there.、Uh, but don't take it as if like you have to do this or have to do that. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe you're already ready to progress. You need already ready to know how you feel. You already know can be aware of your mental state.、Uh, then you should go on to something more, uh, uh, more than just physical feelings. Yeah. Otherwise, you remain all the time at kindergarten. We don't. We don't stay all the time in kindergarten. Yeah. We want to go. We want to progress. Yeah. So the. Uh, you can start off with that, but don't think just that is meditation. Think just that is meditation because it's more than that. Yeah, in in Buddha's teaching, you have satipatthana, as I mentioned before. You have the body, you have feelings, you have、uh, the mind states, and you have phenomena. We want to be able to move up, stick to just the body. Yeah. The、body is nice. It's good to start with because it's easy, it's gross. But when you're ready to move, then move up. Whatever that's obvious to you. Yeah. So the techniques, meditation techniques, they are helpful to begin with, but they are not helpful. They're not a good thing for us to、uh, stick to. They are not yeah、uh, useful for us to stick to as this. This is the way. Because that becomes a prop, it becomes a hindrance to us for our true practice, for our true growth of wisdom. Yeah. So whatever you're doing, you can start with that. Yeah. But then be open to whatever else. You know. You can ask the question: What's the most obvious thing right now? It could still be walking. It could be breathing. Or it could be something else. What's the most obvious thing right now? You can stay with the walking first, but 
in between, you can ask yourself, what's most obvious now? Could be still walking, like I said. Yeah, it, or it could be something else. So the idea is to allow yourself perhaps the possibility of, of knowing other things. And, um, and you, you know, other things, when the mind is ready, it can be knowing other things in a very in an easy way, easily it can be sustaining awareness in, uh, let's say, uh, the mind that is uh, composed. You, know, you notice that the mind is very composed, very collected. When the mind is ready, it can observe that as an object very, very easily, but only when it's ready. Yeah. So be open, as I say. Yeah. And then you can improve. And you can uh, watch more subtle objects and grow in wisdom. You can stay there. Because okay. that's easier to follow, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So why pull back? The object is not important. Okay. The object, the thing that the mind is aware of, that is not important. Important thing is the mind that is being aware. Or the alertness. The this is the one being a, that, that's, that is important. That's, this is the one doing the job. This is the one that we want to cultivate. So okay. the object can change. In fact, it should change whereas things, a situation changes. But this is the one doing the job. Right? So object can change, but meditation is still on. Okay. So uh, for beginners, uh, not encouraged to talk uh, while you're trying to practice. Sit for a while. Just sitting and being aware. Don't have to close your eyes, or do you have to open your eyes? The job is to be aware. The right way. The relaxed way. So we'll be taking a break for breakfast. So during this break, during your eating and all that, it's also time for practice. But it's um, at no times that they are not for practice. So all it, some call it eating meditation. You can, well, you can call it eating meditation. Uh, for me, it's meditating while eating. So eating. Can you be aware? Can you sustain awareness? Can you not lose in awareness while eating? Uh, find out, I see. Yeah. I see, can you maintain awareness while eating? Don't try too hard. Relax. Yeah, don't try too hard. 
if you can meditate well while eating, your, your meditation is good. You can sustain the awareness. Your, your quality is not, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you want to check the quality of awareness, uh, uh, this, this is a good time. Check whether or not you can meditate while eating. Yeah, you can maybe you can do it well while sitting, but when you're eating, you cannot do it. So that's a good uh, measure of your practice. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhassa So did you manage to practice awareness as much as you can uh, you're able to practice awareness during eating. Yeah. So it didn't, if you felt like you didn't do very well, you completely lost your awareness during the whole time, well, then you know how good your practice is. <laughs> Often, the uh, for most people, I mean, under normal circumstances, if they are not in a retreat situation and they want to practice awareness, oftentimes during eating, they completely forget it. They see food, they forget meditation. <laughs> yeah. See food, bounce on food, <laughs> no more meditation. If you want to be able to meditate well while eating, uh, let me give you a good tip. That is, uh, don't immediately start eating. Before you eat, stop. Watch yourself for a while. Notice your eagerness to eat. Do that first. Let yourself calm down first before you start eating. And in a good state of mind, then you can do better. Immediately uh, bounce on your food. You, can, you can't uh, you can't stand anymore. You have to eat now. Then uh, obviously there's a lot of greed. The strength of greed is very strong. When you start eating, then you, you forget about the practice already. Your defilements have taken over. So um, give yourself a chance. Don't start immediately. Right. Um, now I want to talk about right view and right attitude. Uh, this is a con. These are two concepts that I will mention uh, quite often. It's what my teacher will always talk about as well. We, if you understand, if you have some theoretical understanding of um, the Buddha's teachings, you would know that. The Noble Eightfold Path begins with right view. That's number one. And it is important that it begins there because you do need the right ideas uh, of the practice to start. If you 
don't get the right idea, then you can't possibly practice in the right way. So you need to have the right idea, right view. The other one is um, right attitude. If you have the right idea, actually your attitude would generally be better. But if you, you do not, uh, your idea is still not very, very firmly correct yet, that will cause the attitude will not be fully right as well. Uh, but we have to start somewhere. Yeah. And we talk about right view, what, what do we talk about is very, very simple here. Right view here is very, very simple, perhaps too simple. So simple, people don't understand. Right view is simply in, in the practice here, what we need here is to see things as they are, meaning to say, so example, it's very simple. Feelings are just feelings. Sensations are just sensations. Thoughts are just thoughts. Uh, sleepiness is just sleepiness. Um, anger is just anger, etc. Please don't turn on your mic. Yeah. So everything as they are. This is what we want to uh, train the mind to see. If you have thoughts, it's okay. Our job is not to stop the thinking. Our job is to see thoughts as just thoughts. That's all. If you see, if you think that they shouldn't be there, then you have a problem. If you see thoughts as something that's disturbing your practice, then you also have a problem. See thoughts as just thoughts. You recognize them as they are. You are still meditating. If you don't have thoughts, but you're not paying attention, that's not meditation anyway. So it's not about having thoughts or not. It's about whether or not you are seeing things as they are. So thoughts are just thoughts. It's okay. But when you see thoughts as some kind of enemy that is disturbing your meditation, then what you have there is aversion. Getting upset over the situation, then you're not meditating. You're increasing defilements increasing stress, increasing suffering. If you see thoughts as they are, then you're not increasing your suffering. They're just thoughts. And this is a kind of wisdom. To have right view is a kind of wisdom. And with this wisdom, you don't suffer as much. Try and will and see. Allow and see. And will and will. Try and see. Don't know whether the uh, or the transcription works very well. Uh, okay, let's see how it goes. <laughs> but I don't know whether that would be distracting to some people. Huh? If you don't want it, I, I hope you could turn it off. Oh, on your own. So everything as they are, when you get upset over things, then you can be sure you're not seeing things as they are. You're getting lost in the concepts of it. So you can use that as a as something to form you whether or not you're seeing things as they are. If we're actually seeing things as they are, we don't, greed doesn't arise, anger doesn't arise, delusion doesn't arise. But don't try to force yourself to make that happen. That cannot work. If Greed does arise, aversion does arise. Try to see that as they are as well. To see everything as they are, even if you uh, can't, and then some kind of defilements arises. 
So that leads us to right attitude. Right attitude is you not know, trying to force things to happen. If you're not doing as well as you would like, then right attitude allows you to be okay with that. So it's just like that. Right attitude means you are not averse to what's, you are not trying to push away what's happening. You're not uh, trying to make things happen in the way that you want. You're allowing things to be. But like I said earlier, if you're right, your view is not very right yet, your attitude can't be completely right. And therefore, you still have some wrong attitude. So if you have that, if you find yourself uh, disliking what is happening, trying to manipulate things, the least that you could do is to recognize what you're doing. Let's recognize that you are, that that is happening. So that's it. Yeah, very simple. It's not, the practice is not difficult. It's not, I would say, the practice is not complicated. It's not complicated, it's very simple. But it is the simple thing that, it's so simple that we find it difficult to do. We are used to being complicated. Right view, going back to right view, when you see things as they are, thoughts are just thoughts, feelings are just feelings. It means that we are not taking them personally. They are just bad. So it can be very angry, ah, but okay, you notice that. You're not telling yourself, no, don't be angry. You shouldn't be angry. You meditate for so how many years already, still you get angry? Okay, there you go, taking things personally. Anger is just anger. You didn't ask for it to come, did you? So it's, a like, it's just like the weather, it's like rain. You didn't ask for the rain to come, it came. So anger, did you? Do you ever ask anger to come? <laughs> it comes, right? So when anger comes, because conditions are there for it to arise. To tell it not to come, that is uh, crazy. When conditions are there for it to happen, it has to happen. If it shouldn't happen, it wouldn't happen. So if since this has happened, it should. It will happen until it doesn't. So while it's happening, what do we do? We pay attention. We pay attention and we learn from it. And that's how we grow in wisdom so that we uh, can in the future not uh, get caught up so easily. Then we can learn how not to be so angry and how not to be so greedy because we understand we have paid attention and we have learned. So, this is, uh, these are very important ideas to um, bear in mind. And you have to, since we easily forget, you have to check. Am I seeing things as they are? Am I just taking things as just natural phenomena? Or am I getting involved taking them personally? You have to check. This checking is part of the practice. Yeah, in the text, it's called Dhamma Investigation. You check. Because if you don't, then the old patterns are taking charge. We need to retrain ourselves so that uh, wisdom takes charge. Now, let me tell you a bit about uh, the eyes. Do you know that you are seeing right now? Do you know that you're seeing right now, that seeing is happening? Can you be aware that you are seeing? 
or that the fact that seeing is happening. This, this is meditation. To know that seeing is happening is meditation. Just as to know that their breathing is happening is meditation. So if seeing is obvious to you, can be aware of seeing. And we can sit down and just be aware of seeing. In other words, our eyes are open. You can also be aware of seeing with your eyes closed, actually. It's just that you're seeing uh, darkness. So it's not complete darkness. It's a little, it's, 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 there's, a bright, there's brightness in it. In it. If, unless you, you do this and it's a bit darker. Seeing is still happening with your eyes closed. You can't turn it off. <laughs> you can't turn off seeing. You can't turn off physical sensation or, or hearing. And it would be very unfortunate if you think meditation is about turning off. If you turn off everything, then you might as well die. You know, you turn off everything. <laughs> yeah. Turning off everything. Uh, some people like that. They like to meditate and focus on something so concentrated that they can't see, they can't hear, they can't feel, or rather it's not feeling very clearly. And they enjoy that. But what do you get out of that? Just so say unusual experience. Maybe it gives you some bragging rights. With, uh, you can tell your meditation friends about it. You can do or not. <laughs> what, is, what, what do you get? It's nothing. You have just as much suffering as before. <laughs> so just as, as much uh, defilement as before. Or any less. So, um, that doesn't seem like the practice that the Buddha wants us to uh, do. Instead, what we find in the text is the Buddha talk a lot about understanding this, understanding that. There's so many, many things. There's one sutta, there's this long, long list of things to understand. Look at this, it's like, wow. <laughs> right. So, so many things you understand clinging, this kind of clinging, that kind of clinging. You must understand becoming. What is becoming? <laughs> so many, many things. You must understand craving, all sorts of things. So, if you are shutting yourself out, what do you understand? You understand nothing. <laughs> we, the practice of meditation is not about shutting off, it's about becoming awake. What's the meaning of the Buddha? Awakened one, one who is awake. So we want to be more like the Buddha. We, 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 we want to be awakened ones. We don't want to be sleeping ones. Yeah. We want to be knowing, not to be not knowing. So this is important for us to understand. Okay, and... Um, talking about eyes, you can sit, as I mentioned before, you can sit with the eyes open. Um, normally do that. Now, eyes open doesn't mean you're, look, you're looking for things. You're looking at things. Just eyes open and you're still doing the usual thing of watching whatever that's obvious to you. It could be breathing. Yeah. Or you can start off with your eyes closed. Do whatever you, yeah, whatever is obvious to you, you can just be aware of that. Then you open your eyes and still continue to do that. And with your eyes open, I find that there are some benefits. There are some benefits to this uh, A of practice. One is that you don't feel so sleepy. Agree? Yeah. You don't feel so sleepy because normally, when do you close your eyes? when you want to go to sleep. So our minds, uh, there's a strong association in our minds connecting between connecting the closing of the eyes and sleeping. So when you close your eyes, there's already a signal sent to the brain, sleep. So after a while you doze off, 
because it's a strong connection because all our lives we close our eyes to sleep. Yeah. So, um, but that doesn't mean you must open your eyes all the time. You can close it too. If your eyes are tired, I do that as well. Yeah. But don't assume that closing your eyes is better. That's, that's, that's kind of a kind of view that is uh, maybe unhelpful to you. Well, it would certainly be unhelpful when you think this is better. When you think this is better, you will do that more. Uh, like people think sitting meditation is better than walking, then they'll do sitting more, even if that's not suitable. Or they don't think the opposite. Walking is better than sitting, then they do more of that. Then that's, uh, they won't be going by what, is, what they need at that time. So back to open eyes. Uh, some people call this open eye meditation. Uh, no, no, this is not open eye meditation. Yeah. Some people think uh, when people say open awareness, or open awareness means uh, you, you open your eyes. One. <laughs> That's not the same open here. Right? Just happen to be using the same word. Open awareness uh, to me is. Um, well, I suppose the people use that word uh, as opposed to closed awareness, close, close up, no one to know. <laughs> so open. <laughs> well, this, this term can be used in many, many ways. Uh, you can, it's just two words. It can be used many ways. And for me, it means that you, you are open to everything. Yeah, open to everything. You are not fixated on anything. You're not fixated on, I must watch breathing, or I must do this, I must that. You're open. When you have this must, 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 you're tightening yourself up. It's a kind of clinging. When you drop this must, then you're opened. You're open to what is best at the moment. Like what's the best thing to observe at this point? right now. If you already has an, have an idea of uh, this is better, then you are not open anymore. And the another way open is also the mind steps back. And it doesn't go, it opens up. And my teacher will say panoramic view. But you can't force yourself to be very panoramic when you Cannot yet. It's, you know, it's like you have this white, uh, white lens uh, camera. Zoom out. But we are, we are used to zoom in. In fact, we are very good at zooming in, which is concentration. It's like watching a movie. We zoom in for a long, long time. The whole two hours or more, more, more or less, you zoom in. And that time, uh, you don't know anything else. We have wonderful concentration, movie concentration practice. Yeah. But that doesn't grow, grow in, uh, help us to grow in wisdom, right? <laughs> I'll zoom in. When we, how can we be aware of talking or looking and listening without getting lost? You can't really do that if you are not zoomed in, you are, you back off. When you zoom in, you're attached to that object. You don't see anything else. There's no wisdom, not much wisdom working. When you zoom out, meaning to say, let go, then you see that this is just an object among many other objects. You don't take that too uh, seriously. And therefore, you don't have so much defilements going on. It's easier to practice that way. You can relax. So with your eyes open, it's actually easier to have a sense that you are open to other objects because with your eyes closed, when you're meditating, you tend to focus on something in particular. The idea of concentration is very strong and therefore you tend to focus on something even if you are not consciously thinking about it. So if you're used to focusing and you want to defocus, I would say defocus. You want to unfocus or you want to open up, then if your eyes are open, it's easier to get a hang of that. Besides, 
if you're not sitting, your eyes are open, right? If you're walking about, your eye, you open your eyes when you walk about, I hope. Yeah. When you're driving a car, your eyes are open, I hope. <laughs> if your eyes are closed when you drive a car, please tell us <laughs> where, where you're driving. <laughs> so we pre spend our whole day, other than, other than our time, so yeah, we need to take a rest, sleep. We spend our whole day with the eyes open. So if you can meditate with your eyes open, you can meditate the whole day. If you cannot meditate with your eyes uh, open, then you have very little chance to practice. Or you start to think, well, I can't really practice because my eyes are open. Then you don't, you don't practice so much. So we need to, we need to learn, no matter, eventually we still have to, no matter what, we have to learn how to be aware of seeing. That's this seeing is happening. And maybe while you're seeing, you tend to get attracted to some object, you absorb into that, then you know that you're looking particularly at something, then okay, you know that's happening as well. It's okay. Yeah. But if you're really knowing seeing, it's just a picture. It's just a picture. You're not having a concept of what is near, what is far, what is big or small, good, bad. It's just a picture. It's just like a computer screen. So now you're looking at a screen, what's around the screen. Can you see a bigger picture? Quite literally. Can you see the bigger picture? Not just a screen, but what's around the screen. You know, to do that, you back off, you're, you're, you're mentally back off, so you see a bigger picture. Yeah, you're not trying to see this, see that. <laughs> That's busy, you back off. So we can try and see. But why do, we pe do people want to close their eyes? Probably because they, want, they do want to shut off. You do want to escape from the world. The kind of practice I call, it's not really meditation anymore, it's, or you can call it meditation still, called escapism meditation. You don't want to know, you want to not know things. That's the opposite of the Buddha's teaching. Maybe you have had some kind of uh, concentrated experiences before and you like that nice feeling of not knowing, not, not feeling, not seeing, not hearing. Uh, it, it can be nice if you uh, to experience for a while, not, not feeling all these things. But that's all, nothing else. Sometimes that involves going, uh, becoming a bit drowsy. People like the drowsy state because that drowsy state uh, allows them to not think about their problems. So you check for yourself if you have this desire to close your eyes, what do you want? Maybe it's concentration. What do you want? Or maybe it's just habit. Sit down, go size. <laughs> See for yourself, huh? So it's, when your eyes are open, it's less likely for you to fall asleep. It's also less likely for you to daydream, get lost in thoughts, yeah, 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 because uh, you're less able to be aware, to be mindful. So you tend to get lost in thoughts. But with your eyes open, you remember, I'm, I'm not sleeping. This is eyes open. The mind doesn't think this is sleeping time. So... Uh, and then you can feel your body, especially if you're sitting down uh, upright, then you, you remember, oh, meditation. Another good point is that uh, if you have any physical discomfort in the body, with your eyes open, you don't feel, so, feel it so much. Yeah, because with your eyes closed, you tend to focus more on those uh, strong sensations. So it's harder to practice with your eyes closed. 
when you have these unpleasant sensations going on. Yeah. Of course, ultimately, with your eyes open, you get to observe and understand the seeing itself. What is seeing? In the text, the Buddha talk about uh, understanding the six sense basis. Yeah, the eye sense, ear sense, and etc., including the mind sense. And they are all actually equal in the sense that they uh, they're similar. There is the object, there is the thing that is doing the knowing of the object, there's the eye, and then the eye is uh, seeing the object, or there is the ear, ear is hearing the sound. And that is, that is where you get a contact. And out of this contact, what happens? You get to understand this. So of course, with the eyes open, it's easier to cultivate awareness, not concentration. Now we are not trying to uh, cultivate concentration because concentration will not give you uh, wisdom. You want instead is composure or collectedness. This is my translation for the word samadhi. Composure. The mind that is composed, that is collected. This kind of mind, with this composed, in this composed state, wisdom can arise. In a concentrated state, wisdom cannot arise. And in the text, you always talk about when there is samadhi, then you can see things as they are. So obviously that samadhi is not concentration. It's about being composed, about being collected. It's a mind that is settled. So that, you know, it's like camera that is not shaky. If you're shaky, then you can't, you get a blur picture. But if it's steady, then you can get a clear picture. You get that? Yeah, so if your mind is steady and you're paying attention, you get to see things as they are. You get to um, understand. But then if your focus is more like the camera zooming in, zoom, and you only see one little thing. You don't know, though. You don't have the big picture. Right. Uh, questions? It's no longer suitable for you to say, don't sit. Yeah. What's the purpose of meditation? To sit for a long, long time? The purpose of meditation. Sitting for a long time is just sitting for a long time. Like Ajahn Chah said, chicken also, when they lay eggs, you can sit for a long, long time. You don't see chickens getting enlightened. <laughs> So it's not about sitting for a long, long time. Yeah. Some people could sit for many, many hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, but they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, there was one lady who say, oh, this her friend seeing her friends meditating. Wow, she can sit for so long, three hours, four hours, five hours. Some of them see them you know, drooling already. <laughs> and they don't, and they didn't even know they're drooling. And some people sit and they're nodding, nodding, nodding. And after that, people tell them, why, why not so much? I wasn't nodding. To them, they weren't nodding. They, they were so sleepy that they thought they were meditating so well that they don't know what's happening. They're still sitting. So what's the point? Um, the purpose of meditation is for... You forgot. <laughs> oh, okay. You are asking. Oh, okay. Uh, Why do we, do we meditate? Okay. To improve our awareness. You know? So that. So that you can you can actually understand and see things as they are. So that. So that the uh, panya of wisdom can arise from there. So that. So that you know what to do. <laughs> so that we can be free from suffering. Right. Yeah. You need to remember why we are practicing. If we don't remember this, we end up doing something else. 
Yeah, end up we could end up doing doing the opposite of the purpose of meditation, of the whole practice. We can end up creating suff- more suffering. Yeah, because we are so caught up with achieving certain things, become goal oriented to be able to sit for so long to get whatever mental state, to get to this and that. It, it's completely it has completely gone off track when you do that. Whatever meditation that you do, it should bring about what you said just now. It should be about more awareness, more uh, osha to the mind, more wisdom. And of course, with that, less defilements. The mind should become less and less defiled. Not just when you're sitting down, but at any time. You know you have practiced, you know that you have improved if you find yourself not reacting as to things as before. You may be in a certain similar situation and you find yourself, that's interesting. I used to react very strongly to this. Now I don't. You know, you have changed. Meditation experiences are just experiences. Nothing more than that. What you understand now, that's important. What you understand of these experiences and how that changes the way you live, it changes your whole being, even if you're not conscious of it when it happens. Now, that's, that's, that's the important thing. And you know you have changed when things happen and you find yourself not reacting as before. That is something that you cannot create. You cannot manufacture. You cannot just make things happen. But it can happen naturally because you have created the right conditions for that to happen. But this is what meditation is about. We want to create the right conditions. Create the right conditions and so that we change. Not as greedy as angry, as deluded as before. You can know that for yourself as you meet with situations, as you meet people. Yeah, relationship, there are just wonderful opportunities for you to uh, see how you have been practicing, how well you have, how much you have, uh, how, how well you have been practicing, yeah? how much you have progressed. Through relationship, you can see. Yeah? If you're alone, you can't see so much. <laughs> right, so I, I, want you, I want to direct your mind back to why we are practicing. Otherwise, we go into techniques and how to sit longer and blah, 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 and how to get more of this and get less of that. We lose track. Oh, I also want to point out that this can happen because of your momentum. When you have been meditating, you're sitting down, your mind settles. There's a lot of settling of the mind. So when the mind has settled, it's difficult for the defilements to just suddenly arise. Yeah, because it is very settled, very steady. Now, if the mind becomes unsettled again, you can go back to the old way. Yeah, that can happen again if, if you stop meditating. Yeah. So there's another thing that you need to do. There's, the other part is try to understand the anger. Why do you get angry? Now, when you find yourself not so angry anymore, it's good because the mind is calmer. Now, that is a good time for you to understand why you still do get angry, even if it's just 1% left. Why does it, hmm, don't be happy with, oh, no, not so angry, okay. You're happy already. That stops you from going further. So with a mind that is calmer, there's less reaction. There is still a reaction. You can be happy with that. It's good. And then be interested to know, now why? Why in this situation, the mind reacts in this way? And that, that is something for you to observe and understand. Some tips for you. Uh, I'll be, uh, you just hang on there for a while. Eh? You can keep up your, your hand raise. 
Jo. Oh, some pointers. We, we do have the group uh, practices uh, when you are sitting down uh, for the group practice. If you find it difficult to stay sitting down for whatever reason, like for example, say uh, you're, you feel very sleepy, uh, you can actually you can actually get up. You know, group practice doesn't mean that you have to be sitting. Uh, you can get up and walk if that is better for you or stand. Yeah, you're still practicing in a group. Yeah, but um, if the posture is not suitable for you, then feel free to adjust on your. So we should be having to eat again. Always have to eat, eat. Sometimes, sometimes I, I, I wish I don't have to eat. No, very ma fun in Chinese. Say, <laughs> why do we have to eat every day? Uh? If not to eat is better. But no choice, you have to eat. Don't eat, you suffer. <laughs> Once I actually told my teacher uh, while having a meal with him, the food in front of us, so much food. And of course, in Burma, they treat the monks very well, give meditation center some more, you know, so we have lots of lot nice food in front of us. I told my teacher at that time, eating is suffering. <laughs> my teacher said, yeah, eating is suffering. <laughs> There was this, there's another monk, uh, he's a young monk. Um, uh, if, if don't eat, even more suffering. <laughs> well, um, it's not our point. <laughs> that's not our point. So when he said it, I didn't feel like saying anything in return. Um, my teacher also kept quiet. I also kept quiet. <laughs> he, didn't get, he didn't get our point. Yeah. But still, we have to eat. Um, you have to eat. If you don't eat, you do actually will suffer. Uh, try to be moderate in your eating. Uh, don't overeat. That's also suffering. When you eat too much. So be moderate. Uh, be selective. If even if you do need to exercise wisdom in your eating. If you eat the wrong things, you can... You know, you can get a stomach ache too. Mm. So eat well. Yeah. Like I said earlier, if you can practice well while eating, your practice is good. So try try to practice and during eating, doing anything at all. Mm. And in, you're now at home. Maybe there are other people uh, at home with you. So. You may uh, at certain times need to say certain things. Um, I suggest that you try as much as you can to ask if it's necessary. Is it necessary? Yeah. If you really ask yourself if it's necessary, you might eventually find that you, don't, that you have nothing much to say. <laughs> uh, is it necessary? Or certain things that you do, you know, want to, maybe I should check my email. Or maybe I should, oh, these days people don't check them. You WhatsApp, I check my WhatsApp. I'm going to check my Facebook. And then you can ask yourself, is it necessary? Really, really ask yourself, is it necessary? If you do that, you'll find that there are not many necessary things to do. And then you have more space, more time to allow the mind to settle. Yeah. If everything is necessary, I can I can guarantee you, you know, your mind will be very, very busy. Mm. So is it necessary? This is a, a tip for you. Mm. Important. When you are not happy with what is there, then you're not able to see any further because then the farmers have already come in. 
to disturb. Be happy with as much as what you can see. And that allows the mind to be relaxed, to be open. And that allows the mind to know better. You, to know better, the mind needs to be relaxed. When you want to know more, when, when you cannot, you, when, you, when you have this desire to know what you cannot, what it doesn't know, or it cannot know, then the mind tenses up a bit. Whatever you've been doing, just continue. You're not doing it wrong. You just need to do more of it. I thought.